Hi guys, welcome back. Thanks again for watching. It's a good one today. I was not gonna film this today, but I've been playing around with these products for a while and I got so excited yesterday because they're damn good. They're really damn good. So I was like, I have to film this. I just have to. So as you can see here, we're doing, I mean, maybe you can't see because it's just a bag, but this is a high-end, mostly mineral sunscreen haul and review. <laughs> And yes, I spent a lot of money. Um, so before we get going, definitely make sure you like and subscribe. Wait, I always say that like and subscribe this video. That doesn't make any sense. Like this video, subscribe to the channel. If you're interested in seeing lots of sunscreen reviews, some tubing mascara reviews, some fun makeup because I love makeup and definitely lots of skincare, then you are in the right place. Welcome. I hope you enjoy and let's get going. Before I start, I am going to be doing a new little thing on my channel where every video I tell you one thing about myself, kind of weird, random, so that you get to know me. And today's is that I lived in Kazakhstan for two months. I guess lived is not really the right word, but I visited and worked in Kazakhstan for two months. I was there the summer between my junior and senior year of college, and I was on an archaeological dig. So I was there for about two months and out of those two months, I did not shower for three-fourths of it. Not by choice. <laughs> we were up in the mountains on a dig and we had no running water. We had a stream. So we could take like little bucket baths, but that was it. So needless to say, my first shower afterward was chef's kiss fabulous. Okay, so let's get into it right now. Here we go. So today I'm going to be doing a full face of each sunscreen. Sometimes I do half and half just so you can see a comparison. I think this is actually gonna be more helpful to see it as a full face. But the first one I'm just gonna talk about, this is the Peter Thomas Roth. Um, this is called the Max Mineral Tinted Sunscreen. It is broad spectrum, which means UVA and UVB protection, and it's 45 SPF. So it is 1.93 titanium dioxide and 19.24% zinc oxide. So I actually covered this one already and I will link that video above. This one, I don't hate it. I don't love it. I think there's some kind of problematic language in the market. It says that it has a universal vanishing tint. Um, if you have a mineral sunscreen, nine times out of 10, maybe like 9.5 times out of 10, that's not gonna be possible. And even with a tint, I just find that to be a, like, let's just not use that terminology and language, but that I could go on and on about, and I will probably throughout this video. Um, the thing that I actually had more of the issue with, and I'm just gonna swatch it because I'm not gonna put it on my face. Um, the thing that I had more of the issue with is that they say that this is best for medium skin tones, and they even have a thing on the box and on their website that shows like the lightest and then the darkest and then the middle ones, and they're like, this is great for that. And to me, I'm like, really? Like, look at my shoulder. My shoulder is the darkest part of my body. And when you put it on, like, that's not great for medium. But what I've noticed is that A, it rubs in pretty easily. And B, it kind of does disappear in a sense. Like, I wouldn't say it's invisible because it's tinted and it's a mineral sunscreen. But it does kind of... Um, soak in a bit more than a lot of other tinted and or mineral sunscreens. I have grown to like it a lot more than I thought and I don't, I don't hate it. I just can't say that I'm gonna reach for it every day. And lastly, it is quite dewy when you first apply it. If you watch the video where I applied it, I think I had one that was matte or more matte on one side and then this one, and it was like, whew, like lights, camera, action, but it doesn't leave your skin looking like that all day, which is something I really appreciate because I just don't want to look like a disco ball all day. So I would give this, I mean, I'm not doing like a rating, but out of 10, I would give it maybe like a solid six and a half or seven. Like it's not bad. I don't know if I would repurchase it me myself just because I go through so many sunscreens. So that's number one. So as I said in the title of this video, most of these are mineral sunscreens and I was trying to do that purposely just because I know mineral sunscreens are very popular. I like them myself, but I also use chemical sunscreens. Um, so I did wanna give one option in the higher end range. Now, of course, that doesn't mean there are no other options. There are a ton of high end chemical sunscreens out there. Like that video would cost me a million dollars. 
Um, but I just picked up this one because it sounded really interesting and I actually got the smaller size, which I, I'm going to be filming a video on that in a second, but this one, I just like that you can try something. It was still $22, which is, you know, these are Sephora high end brands, but if you want to try it, I guess it's, but it's better than buying the full price one, which is $52. $52. So for the small one, it is 0.67 ounces. The large one is 1.7 fluid ounces which is pretty standard. Like for foundation, one fluid ounce is standard. And for sunscreen, I would say 1.7 fluid ounces is pretty standard. So as I said, this is $22 and the full size is 52. It is a 45 SPF and the chemical filters are 3% avobenzone, 5% homosalate, 5% octosalate, and 10% octocrylene. So they do say that it is reef safe, which means they usually leave out oxybenzone. That's kind of the big one that a lot of places leave out to call it like a clean chemical one. I mean, do what you will with that. Also, there are kind of reports coming out that the whole reef safe thing about mineral sunscreens versus chemical sunscreens is kind of based off of some faulty and like very minuscule research. So I'm not gonna go into that, but it's also important to kind of realize that research is changing and things that brands may be um, espousing aren't always true. So I'll leave that there. <laughs> the interesting thing, they have a lot of claim, my hair, wow. So they have a lot of claims about this, which is why I kind of liked it. One of the things they say it has is pentamvitin, which I've never heard of. I'm sure it's like a proprietary complex, um, but they say that it provides 72 hours of hydration, even after you wash your face, because I was like, how does that work? You don't wash your face for 72 hours? That's kind of one of the claims. Another interesting thing it says is it's got a 30% hyaluronic acid complex. I'm glad they said complex because there's no way you would put 30% hyaluronic acid in anything. It would be like a hard tacky gel. Like it, you wouldn't be able to put it on your face. So when they say complex, it doesn't mean 30% of it is hyaluronic acid. It's probably a very small amount, which is okay. You don't need a lot of hyaluronic acid. In some of the formulas that I make, it's like 0.5% and that's fine. It's, you know, you don't need a ton. And then they also have 5% Sun Boost ATB, which is also in the Josie Moran, Moran, Josie Moran um, sunscreen, which I reviewed a while back. And it's supposed to just boost the sun protection filters in the sunscreen. So sounds good to me. So it looks like a pretty standard cream sunscreen. And so I should have put my hair back. Oh no. So like I said, this is a chemical one and chemical sunscreens, you really shouldn't have a chemical sunscreen that you have a hard time rubbing in and like not having a white cast. And if you do, I would say ditch that sunscreen immediately because they just, there's no reason for them to leave a white cast. Um, and with chemical sunscreens, you know, you don't have to layer it as thinly as I do with mineral sunscreens. Um, that's one of my biggest pet peeves. Why did I do it on one half? Oh, that's so hard because I can't use two hands. Um, but you don't have to be as kind of delicate in your application. You shouldn't have a hard time rubbing it in. I have not had any issues with this around my eyes. Um, and I do like to try to go around like underneath my eyes because you need SPF there too. But if you do have sensitive eyes and you know like chemical sunscreen just kind of irritate that, just be careful. Okay, so that's the finish. You see there's, oh, still got some in my eyebrows. But you see that it's got a nice kind of dewy plump look. It honestly, it looks like I just put a moisturizer on and I think that's what they're going for. Um, it does say hyaluronic cloud moisturizer on here. So that's kind of the look that they're going for. And this soaks in pretty quickly, I would say like, less than five minutes and then you can apply your makeup you can apply anything else over it and it does just fine so this one high high ranking for me i really like it i would give it like a nine um it's pricey and i think for chemical sunscreens you can probably find ones that are going to do the same but with a lower price tag so i wouldn't necessarily run out and get it but if you do like your lux products and I don't know, maybe you just really want this one. I highly recommend it. I just wouldn't spend that much on a like regular basis because it is gonna be pretty pricey. Next up is the Dr. Dennis Gross All Physical Lightweight Wrinkle Defense Broad Spectrum SPF. I 
think I got it all. This retails for $42 and comes in 1.7 fluid ounces, pretty standard amount, not standard price. <laughs> um, and it comes in this little box like so. So you have this comes out. I like the packaging a lot. I don't, I mean, that shouldn't affect your choice hopefully, but 16% zinc oxide. So it's just zinc oxide, no titanium dioxide. And it is SPF 30. Now opening the package. Yeah, I really like this packaging. Like for sunscreen, this just really appeals to me. Oh, and I forgot to mention for the Peter Thomas Roth, both of those are fragrance free. Um, no scent at all in either. And this one also claims to be fragrance free. And it is, I would say for sure. This one is oil free. And it also says that it blends into all skin tones. They say that it's because it has um, transparent zinc oxide. That is some marketing jargon right there. Um, zinc oxide, unless you like change the whole chemistry of it, it's not gonna be transparent. I mean, you can do things to make it less transparent, but I don't, I, I don't like that terminology. Um, again, I just wish they would quit with these kind of transparent invisible things because I would prefer you to tell me like what skin tones it works on, but of course they're not gonna do that because they wanna sell to as many people as possible. So frustrating. It also has ligandberry and sea buckthorn extract, which are great anti-inflammatory extracts. But I've said this before, I wouldn't look to your SPF to be your skincare. Like if it has some of those extracts in it, they might be at a pretty small percentages, which is not terrible, but they're not going to be doing what you need your skincare to be doing. You should be using skincare at night. That is when you're gonna get the most bang for your buck because your skin can like soak it all in. So don't go to this just because it has sea buckthorn. That would be silly. We're going to apply. And I'm gonna do one finger, but I'm gonna apply it differently just because it's a little hard when I do half my face. Okay, so that is the application, two fingers length. It goes on so quickly, so easily. It is very lightweight. As you can see, the consistency is much thinner than a lot of mineral sunscreens. Um, I still have a little bit of a cast. I'm not mad at this cast at all, but this is why I say you can't say invisible or like sheer because if you have a darker skin tone, that's what it's gonna be. And for people like me who have like a medium skin tone, I'm okay with it because I'm probably gonna put something on over this. In the summer, it looks worse. In the winter, I probably wouldn't have a cast because I'm lighter everywhere. Um, but I think as somebody with medium skin tone, and I can't speak for people with darker skin tones, you you do understand that it's just going to happen. It's For me, it's more about the ease of application, if it blends in nicely, um, and then like the level of white cast, because there are some where I'm like, absolutely no. But like for me, this is great. I, I love this. Now, a few things about this that I've noticed. I love the applicator. I think this is part of the success of this product, and I will talk about that in a little bit. This is a really great thing. It makes it so that you only get a little, and then almost naturally you apply it in a thinner layer rather than what I call glopping it on your face. Um, I think that's a really wonderful aspect of it. I also though can see the downside where I didn't feel like I applied enough. You know, it's one of those things, it's like a blessing and a curse. It lends to ease of application, but then I worry that people aren't maybe putting enough on, which is a common, common mistake. This one leaves you with a nice dewy finish. It's not overly dewy and it doesn't feel like it's not going to sink in. So when I wear this, it does sink in. I wouldn't say like as immediately as some of like, of course the chemical ones, but I don't feel like my face is shiny all day and I can't apply makeup on, I can't sweat, I can't do that kind of stuff. It just feels a little bit more moisturized than some others. I'm looking at you, my shell. Oof. If this video isn't up yet, look out for it when it comes up. So out of 10, I guess I am giving these ratings now. <laughs> so out of 10, I would say that this one is a really, really high eight. I'm not gonna give it more than that just because the terminology and like the invisibleness of their marketing, I don't love. If they had done without that, I would have been like, yeah, 8.5, nine. But once brands kind of come around to that, I will be able to give them higher markings. Also, this is some tea between the two of us. Um, I got an email from Dr. Dennis Gross about wanting to partner with me. I responded because I was like, oh yeah, like I wanted to buy this anyway. This was maybe like a month and a half ago. They ghosted me, never responded. 
So Dr. Dennis Gross's team, if you're out there watching this, I expect an apology. <laughs> I'm kidding. What am I? I like have like a thousand subscribers, but honestly, like if you send an email to somebody and then never respond, that's kind of shitty. Next up is Dr. Brandt. This one I was waiting for to come in the mail and it finally did. And I was so excited and I'm so glad I got it. Ooh. This is one of the most expensive ones. I'm actually kind of going in order of least to most. Um, not kind of, I am. <laughs> so this one retails for $65. Oh, I shouldn't do that. For 1.7 fluid ounces, so it's pricey. I think the only thing I've ever spent that was more than this was the Josh Rosebrook, which is just like, I, I can't even talk about that. This one has 17% zinc oxide. They say it is a liquid sun shield daily brightening UVF, no, UVF, where did I come up with that? UVA, UVB, mineral sunscreen protection. It's SPF 50, which I'm like, Yes, thank you, thank you. We need more mineral sunscreens that are 50. Like, I see so many 30, 35s, and I wanna see more 50. And I understand why it's hard, I do. Um, this one has plankton extract, which would be, you know, like, algae, <laughs> um, which says it evens tone, cool, cool. But then it says it detects hyperpigmentation, which I'm like, I, I had to reread it like a few times, and I was like, okay, like, I can detect hyperpigmentation but that doesn't help me. So again, like marketing team, maybe work on that one. And then clary sage extract, which is supposed to help brighten. And they do say it's lightweight, which it would appear that way because it's in kind of a liquid form in a dropper. Okay, so this is another one where it's kind of hard to get the two finger lengths. I guess I can do it kind of, but it is super liquidy. Um, so we're just gonna, ah! This one is not fragrance free. It has a fragrance that I can't pinpoint. <sighs> lavender maybe? There's some lavender in it, um, which I don't understand why they do that, especially for mineral sunscreens. It's kind of like, most people now know that people with more sensitive skin use mineral sunscreens. So if you're gonna put a fragrance in it then, it just seems like counteractive, very liquidy. It's like almost a serum. But as you can see, it looks really nice. Um, it goes on so quickly, so easily. I would say it reminds me a lot of this uh, Dr. Dennis Gross in the consistency and application. Um, it does feel more moisturizing than the Dr. Dennis Gross one. Not, not that that one wasn't, like it wasn't matte by any means, but this one feels like nice. It feels like a good drink of water for my skin. So if you have dry skin, this might be a really good option for you. Um, that said, it doesn't leave, like I can already see my skin being less dewy looking as it like kind of sets down, but not in a bad way. Like I don't, me personally, I don't want a sunscreen that leaves me glowing to the gods, as I say, all day long, because then it's like, I can't sweat, I can't do anything. I want it to have some moisture in it so my normal to dry skin doesn't feel like tight and too matte. I don't want it to look like I just ate like a pound of chicken. You can see like right on my, the edge of my face, kind of where the, my normal skin would be and if I didn't get it, that there is a difference in the tone. This one leaves me a little bit pinker, definitely has a little bit of white cast, but I don't think they do any marketing that says invisible, which is nice to see. But overall, I really enjoy it. I like both of them a lot. I think they both have a really nice application. This one is the easiest of the applications just because it's so liquidy and viscous. This one is like 20 bucks less. So if you're kind of up in the air between the two, I would go with this one just because the price alone on this is ridiculous. Oh, and lastly, I should have given my little ranking. Out of 10 sunglasses, this one gets, um, I would say like 8.5. I really like it really, really like it. And I should mention when you like a product and it goes on easily and you don't have like an issue rubbing it in, it makes you want to apply more. So that's why I really like these last two, but I think this dropper form is actually really nice and kind of encourages people to apply more. Okay, last up is the Murad. So this is called City Skin Age Defense Broad Spectrum SPF 50 PA++++. 
four pluses. Love it. Love, love, love to see SPF 50. Again, I think the higher the better. We don't apply enough. So if you can kind of counteract the tendency to not apply enough with a higher SPF, you go girl or guy. You go guy. So this one reminds me a lot of Korean packaging, kind of just tiny, like it fits into the palm of my hand. But it is 1.7 fluid ounces and it retails for a whopping $68. But as I film this today, it is, what is today? Today is May 29th, 2021. It's on sale for $40, which is almost $30 off, which is amazing. And I don't know how long or why, and I'm mad that I didn't get that deal. But if you are watching this soon, go and purchase it now. <laughs> so this one has 10% zinc oxide and 2.7% titanium dioxide. It also says that it has iron oxides in it, which you see a lot in makeup and that actually helps to deflect blue light. That is basically added protection in your sunscreen. The other thing it has in it is lutein, which I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Um, I always think about it for eye health. So from what I read, lutein is a xanthophyll or a carotenoid. I hope I'm pronouncing those correctly, which basically are anti-inflammatory. That coupled with the iron oxides is really supposed to help protect from blue light. So those are some of the claims and yeah, let's put it on my face. This one is, it's not tinted, but it has definitely more of a peach tone to it, which is basically from the iron oxides and, and is helping to kind of eliminate the white cast. This one doesn't have um, an added fragrance per se, but it has a scent. I just figured it out. It smells like kinship. The sunscreen, not kinship. I don't know what kinship actually smells like. Um, but it's the almost the exact same scent, so I wonder what's in both of those that gives it this kind of like almost vanilla-y scent. Um, while I don't mind that at all, you know, if scent is something that kind of turns you off or your skin just doesn't like, it's not strong. It's actually less than the kinship, but it is there. So there's the application. Um, it looks pretty darn good. Did I say it has 17% zinc oxide? I don't think I did. So it does. So it's got a pretty high amount of zinc oxide, um, also with high SPF and the PA rating. So you're going to expect to see some kind of cast, but because of the iron oxides, I think it gives you a lot less of a cast than like a, just a normal mineral sunscreen. And to me, this goes on really nicely. I look a little like, I wouldn't say white casty, but like a little like pinkish, which makes sense because the color. And I would say that this one is also a very natural finish, maybe a little less dewy than these two. Um, as you can see, like the high points of my face do have a bit of a, a shine, not a bad one, but the rest of it feels really nice. It feels like it's setting down. And within a few minutes, it really, the cast kind of dissipates. So this is another really, really great option. And out of 10 sunglasses, I would give it a nine. It's really nice. All right, we are finished. That was such a fun one to film. I really, really like these sunscreens. It always makes it so much more enjoyable for me when the sunscreens are quality. And I hate to say that they are all really good because they're all also really expensive. And I can't stand the fact some of the better products out there are just out of range for a lot of people. Like to spend $65 on a sunscreen, something that you have to, well, you should be applying every day and ideally multiple times a day to make it $65, it just breaks my heart. And I also understand that to get a product and the formulation to be like this, it takes a lot of research and development and then they have marketing, all these things. So I do understand, but I just wish they could be more affordable. Also, I've been doing so many reviews about sunscreen and then never put any makeup on my face. So I'll probably get some comments telling me I'm ugly or something, but hey. This is about the sunscreen. I don't really care what I look like right now. <laughs> also, wow, my hair stayed down the whole time. Congratulations, Dana. Okay, so final thoughts. These three, I guess I had four, maybe five, but I, I'm kind of taking these to be in a different category just because A, this is chemical and B, this is tinted. The other three that I reviewed are mineral and non-tinted. So these two kind of live in their own. And this one I already did a little bit of a, of a review on. So when I'm talking about these three in general, I really, really love them. They all got between an eight and, well, I guess 
did I say like seven and a half? I would say seven and a half to nine on my sunglasses review scale, which I just made up. And I think there are a few things that make them all so great. One, the applicator. As you saw for the Dr. Dennis Gross one, as you saw for this, which is a dropper. And then even for the Murad one, it comes in a thin applicator. And that is so key. I have that whole video, the whole video, it's four minutes long. I will link it here though. It's all about why people don't like their mineral sunscreens and why they are applying them wrong. A large part of that is because the applicator inherently makes people put on more. So this is the native one, which I really like. But if I had to suggest something for them to change, it would be this applicator. Um, you just kind of pump out two globs and then it's much easier to kind of put a whole mess on like that. Whereas if I took the De Dr. Dennis Gross, it comes out in a thinner consistency and then like almost immediately you can rub it in. So this one would take a lot longer and then people are just going to like kind of like it just because the actual process of getting it out made it this way. I don't think the native is a bad sunscreen at all. I actually really recommend it. I just think if they could change a few things, that would be one thing I would recommend. The last reason that I have why I think they're all really good and kind of better than a lot of cheaper drugstore options is because of the consistency. I've noticed time and time again with a mineral sunscreen, if you have a thinner consistency, you're less likely to get a thick white cast. So something like this, where it's really, it is a liquid, like you are dropping it out. Whoa, I'm gonna drop it. Um, it just, it lends itself to an easier application with less of a white cast. And as you saw with all three of these, they all had a really thin consistency. So I think that is key. So these are all really pricey. Like I said, this is a high-end Sephora brands uh, mineral sunscreen review. And I understand if you can't afford them, I mean, I shouldn't have probably bought them, <laughs> but I do, but I absolutely, you get to the end of the video and you stop being able to talk. Turk. So while these are pricey and I'm missing my other Peter Thomas Roth, I think they're actually all really, really, really great. And I think they kind of serve different purposes for different skin types and even skin tones. So someone who has reviewed quite a bit of mineral sunscreens, I would without a doubt recommend all three of these. And um, I'm not necessarily going to rank them just because they do, like I've said a few times, they kind of serve different purposes. So with that said, if you have any questions, if you want to know, like I have this kind of skin, this type of skin, and I need this, just ask below. I always respond and I hope you enjoyed this video. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.